Everything that has a beginning has an end. Atoms, humans, black holes, and even the universe itself travel 20 times more into the future to 1 trillion years. Stars will start decaying into white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. Giving the start of the degenerate era, no laughing. What happens next depends on whether protons decay or not, which we don't know for sure. But for the sake of simplicity we'll assume they do, and leave the other possibility for, for another video. The prophecy is true. Hello mortals. What do you imagine when hearing about iron? A relatively common or found in most Minecraft caves, that mysterious thing that no college student is aware of, or the thing that could make up the last stars in the universe. If it wouldn't already take a painstakingly long amount of time for the universe to cool down and die through the heat death, let's add the possible factor of matter not decaying at all into the equation. In a previous video, I talked about whether or not protons decay after 10 to a decillion years, thus leaving nothing but photons and leptons behind. The thing is, scientists don't yet know if protons decay or not, and the standard model doesn't suggest that they should ever become unstable and decay. So let's look at this possibility, what if protons do never decay? Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. First of all, why do particles even decay? The short answer is that they are lazy. Relatable isn't it? Everything in the universe tends to a more stable state, and you are more stable when you have less potential energy to spend. For example, if you were to stand on your feet and suddenly lose consciousness, you will begin to fall, as your body seeks to spend all of its potential energy and lower its energy level. For the same reason you sleep lying in bed and not like a flamingo. In the case of particles, they too want to lower their energy level, by simply decaying into other smaller particles. If you somehow rip a neutron out of a nucleus and leave it by itself, after roughly 15 minutes, it will decay into a proton and emit an electron. Protons are lighter than the neutrons, so they have less energy and thus, are more stable. Also, both the neutron and the proton are baryons, so after the decay, the type of the particle remains unchanged, it's only the energy that decreases. In the case of protons, however, there are just no other baryons in which they could decay, as the proton is the lightest of them. This should mean that the proton is in its most stable form, and there is nothing lower they could decay into. So, how will this fact change the future of our universe? Let's fast travel to the degenerate era, when there is nothing but black holes, fading stars, and rogue planets. After some long time, and I really mean a long, long time, all matter as we know it, will slowly decay into iron. As I said, the universe is very lazy, and iron has the lowest energy level out of all elements because it has the most tightly bound nuclei. Any element that is heavier than iron, like copper, gold, or plutonium will decay over time by nuclear fission into iron. The element with the longest half-life is tellurium, which will decay in 10 to the power of 24 years, which is 160 trillion times greater than the age of the universe. And yet, this rather extensive period of time can be thought of as a blink compared to the time that lighter elements need to transform into iron. The only way this can happen is through cold fusion. Unlike thermonuclear fusion, that happens inside the core of stars, cold fusion occurs under any temperature and pressure. During nuclear fusion inside the stars, nuclei are so close together, that the nuclear force surpasses the repulsive electromagnetic force and eventually sticks them together, releasing a lot of energy and creating heavier elements in the process. But at low temperatures, nuclei are so far apart from each other, that only magic would make them pass through the electromagnetic force barrier. And that magic is called quantum tunneling, the process of a particle getting through a barrier, simply by teleportation, and some shady quantum stuff. The denser that force barrier is, the less likely the particle is to tunnel through it. In the case of matter in the cold and far future of the universe, the chance of this happening is incredibly small, but not equal to zero. It is estimated that all matter will fuse into iron through cold fusion and quantum tunneling after 10 to the power of 3200 years. All these iron atoms would come together in clumps to make iron stars, the last objects to exist inside the universe. To put this giant amount of time in perspective, if you replace every atom in the observable universe with another observable universe full of atoms, and then you replace these atoms with another observable universes, and repeat this cycle 40 times, you'll have in total this many atoms. 
If you counted one atom per year in the super universe, it would still not be enough for all the elements to turn into iron. During this process, it is thought that some black dwarfs will explode into supernovas after 10 to the power of 1100 years because of the accumulating iron. Even though new elements will arise from nuclear fusion during the explosions, they will transform into iron relatively fast. These supernovas will be the last fireworks our universe will ever see. But as we already know, this will not happen soon at all. But if you are as impatient as I am, I have the perfect solution while we're waiting for the ironization of the universe, Blinkist, our longtime sponsor. It summarizes entire books in just 15-minute blinks. You've got thousands of educational titles and 27 categories of the world's best knowledge to choose from. If I ever spend the entire day being unproductive, I listen to something that piques my interest and the day instantly doesn't feel wasted anymore. Or I can listen to full-length audiobooks for my commute to the Skynet headquarters. They've recently introduced shortcasts, summarized versions of your favorite podcasts. All these combined provide you a great opportunity to broaden your knowledge and get new perspectives without having to spend hours on searching and researching, it's all there for you ready. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. Hurry up. Back to the video. Everything until now was just a minuscule fraction on the time scale of the universe. For all it remains, the iron stars will very slowly collapse into black holes, whether through gravity or the aforementioned quantum tunneling. And this process will take an inconceivable amount of time, 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 76 years. That's like writing a zero for each atom in the universe in order to make up the time frame. Eventually, the newly formed black holes will evaporate through Hawking radiation. But this process only takes 10 to the power of 108 years at most for the most supermassive black holes, which, at this time period is nothing but an instance compared to the lifetime of the iron stars. So you could say that, at this time scale, the iron stars will just disappear the moment they transform into black holes, making them the actual winners of Universe Battle Royale. What happens next is very speculative, as we don't know what the role of dark energy in all of this is. But everything left after the death of the iron stars are just photons and leptons like electrons and positrons flying around for almost eternity, the next checkpoint being the birth of a new Big Bang in about 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 76 years if we're looking at the probability of quantum fluctuations, which makes the lifespan of iron stars a mere joke. And I'm not even comparing it to the current age of the universe. So yeah, do what you feel like doing, we're insignificant.